So a little background on the drama. And a lot of people have been asking me, what is this drama for? Is it for Ram Nomi? Is it for some occasion? No, it's for no occasion. It's our annual tradition in Sunday school that every year we do a drama based off of what we are studying. And this year we are studying stories from Srimad Bhagavatam. And one of the stories that the children have studied, um, and is one of our favorites, or one of my favorites, is the churning of the milk ocean. And so we've never done that story before, but um, she's not here with us tonight, she's moved away, but um, Shameshri Prema Devi Dasi took her time from a different state to write a script, especially for our children, because she knows our kids and she's worked with them. So she created a drama with the characters in mind and who would be what. So um, I want to thank her from afar uh, for all that she did. But she wrote a special drama to depict this very beautiful pastime called The Churning of the Milk Ocean. And the theme of this drama is how the Lord rescues his devotees again and again and again. So I have a challenge for all of you in the audience, okay? So this is your quiz question, and we'll ask you at the end to see how well you paid attention. We're going to ask you to count during the drama. How many times can you count Lord Vishnu coming and rescuing his devotees again and again? Can you get the correct number as to how many times he comes to save his dear devotees? We're going to ask you at the end. Okay. So please give a big round of applause and lots of enthusiasm for the kids. And without further ado, the turning of the milk ocean. The demigods, having been cursed by Durvasa Muni, were gruesomely defeated in battle by the Asuras. Many lost their lives, and the three worlds were bereft of auspiciousness due to the demoniac rule. When the demigods were deprived of all influence and their heavenly kingdom, they went to the assembly house of Lord Brahma to inform him of what had happened. Meditating upon Shira Dakshai Vishnu within his heart, Brahma brought all the demigods to the Lord's abode on an island called Shweta Dvipa, situated in the ocean of the North. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, being thus worshipped with prayers by the demigods and Lord Brahma, appeared before them. His bodily effulgence resembled the simultaneous rising of thousands of suns. They could see neither the sky, the directions, nor even themselves, 
but to speak of seeing the Lord, who was pleasant. truce with the demons and asuras who are now being favored by time. Immediately endeavor to produce the nectar of immortality. Cast into the ocean of milk all kinds of vegetables and medicines. Make Mundar a mountain, the churning rod, and Vasuki, the rope for churning. Whatever the demons ask, agree to their proposal and churn the ocean of milk without deviation. Thus, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva returned to the abode while the demigods approached Maharaj Brahma with a proposition for churning the milk ocean. frustrated and disheartened, and their arms 
thighs, and shoulders were broken. Therefore, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who knows everything, appeared there on the back of his carrier, Garuda. Observing that most of the demons and the demigods had been crushed by the falling of the mountain, the Lord glanced over them and brought them back to life. Thus, they became free from grief, and they even had no bruises on their bodies. Whoa, what happened? Our friend, it's back! Yeah! We knew you'd save us! The Lord very easily lifted the mountain with one hand and placed it on the back of Garuda. With Lord Vishnu by their side, all the demigods and demons quickly traveled to the ocean of milk. The Lord placed the mountain into the ocean and wrapped Vasuki, the great snake, around it in preparation for churning. After carrying the heavy Mandara mountain, Garuda became hungry. Suddenly, he realized the greatest meal to be Vasuki the snake in front of him. Vishnu, once again, saved the demons and demigods and sent Garuda home. The churning 
items were produced. The Surabi cows. Uchaishaba, the white horse. Ah! Airava, king of elephants. Ooh! Gems like the Spuma money and Padma Raga money. Ah! And many beautiful Apsaras. <laughs> then there appeared the goddess of fortune, Rama, the source of all opulences. She appeared like electricity. Because of her exquisite beauty, her youth, her glories, everyone, including the demigods, the demons, and the human beings desired her. The goddess of fortune, however, is the most chaste, for she does not know anyone but the supreme personality of Godhead. Immortality is for the strong, not the weak. Why should you get it first? 
noticed that Mohini was giving nectar only to the demigods. So, he sneaked over to the other side, <laughs> pretended to be a demigod, and hid between the sun god and the moon god.
after the Supreme Personality of Godhead had brought to completion the affairs of churning the ocean and feeding the nectar to the demigods, who are his dear devotees, he left the presence of them all and was carried by Garuda to his own abode. Seeing the victory of the demigods, the demons became intolerant of their superior opulence. Thus, they began to march toward the demigods with raised weapons. When the demigods could find no way to counteract the activities of the demons, they simply remembered that by thinking of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one can become free from all dangers.